Great, next up we have Ken Brisden, the non-executive chair of Patriot Battery Metals. Uh, Ken is a mining engineer with more than 30 years of experience in both surface and underground mining operations, including roles in mine management, production, brownfield and greenfield development roles, as well as executive and board positions across multiple commodities. Uh, he was formerly the managing director and CEO of Pilbara Minerals, where he led the rapid development of Pilbara from a junior explorer to one of the world's largest lithium producers. Thank you, Katie, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It really is a pleasure to be with you, and uh, nice to see so many people in the room. It was only 2019 that I had the effect of clearing the room, so it feels like we've <laughs> it feels like we've come a long way. And I should also point out that I'm a I'm a poor substitute for Blair Way, our CEO and president. Um, both he and Natasha, our CFO, are here, and I'd encourage you to go and meet with them in, at the booth. Um, a fantastic team developing at Patriot, and I'm sure you'll, in, you'll enjoy the chance to meet with them. So today, I'm going to share a little bit that's many and varied. Obviously, uh, pointing out the merits of what it is that we've got within Patriot and the Corvette discovery. I'm going to share a bit more about what it means to be a participant in the supply chain, both, both for, for Corvette in North America and the development of the North American market, um, but also a few more comments about the lithium industry as a whole, you know, what I see today, where it's headed in the medium term, and uh, perhaps closing with a couple of sort of broader industry comments about, about critical minerals and, and what it means for, for the shape of our industry. Now, I fully expected uh, when I finished up at, at Pilbara Minerals that I would be lounging on a beach somewhere. And as much as I got to do that for about five minutes, I couldn't help myself with respect to getting involved at Patriot because it really is incredible what's been discovered uh, in, in north central Quebec and the significance of the, the package that Patriot has drawn together um, for a new lithium raw materials province. In laying out the geological maps and thinking through, you know, what it might mean to be a, to be a part of the story, I couldn't help but have flashbacks to to doing the same job back in 2015 at Pilgangora, and as you've heard, uh, it continues to grow. You know, 400 million tonnes plus now at Pilgangora, and you can count on pretty much one hand globally those those special pieces of geology that represent that sort of opportunity. And that's in essence, you know, what I see at Corvette. It really is incredible. Combination of scale, but perhaps when you drill into the detail in a, in a, in a, um, at a micro scale, what you see is incredible spodumene crystal development. And that tells you a lot about what's going on in the system. So fortunately, you know, here we are today, so far so good. We've put out our maiden resource and it's over 100 million tonnes. But I think we can safely say that's just the beginning uh, because it is one of the big ones. So I'm very, very happy to be a part of it. If you come out to the booth, we can talk it through in, in more detail, but what you see in the initial drilling, so here we're looking at a long section through, through the CV5 deposit. It's contiguous, it's largely one piece of pegmatite, again, just, just referencing this concept of scale and what the geology can present. Um, about 3.4 kilometres long in resource so far, 3.7 kilometres drilled at CV5, with extensions, I think, highly likely on either end and at depth. Some of it is incredibly high grade, and again, another key pointer to what it means to have one of these special ones globally. The Nova Zone is highlighted there um, with the ellipsoid. Um, not unusual, significant intercepts beyond 2%, but you know, as high as 4 and 5%. So really incredible. Spodumene crystal development at scale translates to if you keep drilling, a la Pilgangora, you will keep growing the resource. And in the end, that's going to deliver something of significant scale. But wait, there's more um, sections. I love a good section. Some of you out there might love a good section too. 
significant widths from, and in, in, the, in the lithium game and hard rock spodumene, what you want is something wide to mine because the narrower it is, the more difficult it is to get the toothpick out and, and get the spodumene out into concentrate. It's a really important key criteria to the development of a future mine and fortunately at CV5 we've got that in spades. But there's more to come. So it's not, you know, really um, Blair and the team did, a, did an amazing job securing the, the, the most significant land package, I'd say, in the James Bay region and creating a contiguous package where there's known spodumene outcrops. So we've only drilled 3.7, or let's say about four kilometres of the best part of 45 kilometres of incredibly prospective geology. And the geos have spent enough time out there now walking around to appreciate there is other significant outcrops. And those significant outcrops, I, I think you could reasonably assume, are also going to deliver um, more hits um, and I'd like to think significantly more mineralisation than has already been printed today at CV5. And it's obvious because it's staring you in the face. You pull back the moss and you can see the spodumene in the outcrop. All you've got to do is drill it. So the hard work was done when it wasn't sexy to be in lithium, collecting that land package at a really competitive cost. Now we have the premier land package that's already demonstrated 100 million tonnes plus, plus in resource, but it's fair to say there is a lot more to come. So here's some photos of, of the other outcrops. Some of them are perhaps more exciting than others. Um, CV9 is one that we're all looking forward to drilling. It's a significant outcrop. It's got the spodumene in it. We can see it there. It's staring you in the face. So we're looking forward to getting the drilling underway there. What you've got at, at, um, at Corvette, and here I'm stretching into a little bit about you know, the industry piece. We, we've done a deal with Albemarle. They've taken a minority stake in Patriot, which I think is a really important piece of validation for those of you that might be worried about what it means to discover, uh, to discover lithium in the North Americas. Well, Albemarle's putting a big tick in the box but if you, if you think about, you know, we're not a China story. Let me just state it plainly. So, so we're in Quebec. We're in the emerging North American supply chain. It's going to be another big market. But relatively speaking, it's in its infancy. Here in WA, you have the benefit of a ready-made merchant market in China. So that's been pretty much the WA story, historically and, and probably to this day. You're producing a spodumene concentrate, there's every chance it's going to go to China. Well, that's not going to be the case with respect to Patriot. Patriot has to develop in parallel with the industry downstream the balance of the supply chain. Now, the good news is that's actually already happening. So Livent is construction, constructing hydroxide capacity in Quebec. POSCO and GM are building cathode materials facilities. And of course, Albemarle has a very, very strong intention with respect to development of multiple chemical plants through the North Americas. So we're saying we're going to entertain that relationship. We're going to work hard over the next nine months to look at how we can interconnect the mine and the chemical capacity so that they are built out at the same time. In three or four years' time, there will be a mine with spodumene concentrate attached to a significant chemicals facility. And we've been really deliberate in, in, in entertaining that discussion because they have to happen in parallel. But what do you get with Albemarle themselves? Well, what, what they have constructed down at Kemerton, whilst there is a view that it's expensive, it is absolutely first class and you can see what they have paid for. The engineering is amongst the best I've seen globally in the chemical conversion industry and they're actually producing a battery grade product. They're in qualification now, so, so the process is proven. Of course there's more ramp up to be done, but the plant works. So why not leverage that, you know, what's happening here in WA, and see that same logic deployed in the North Americas. It's really, really compelling. And of course, North America is going to be an important market. So very happy with the commencement of the relationship. Um, the last point I would make is our expectation, Corvette's going to be a big mine and there's every chance that there will be multiple chemical facilities hanging off that facility in the North Americas or even in Europe um, in the same way that, say, Greenbushes operates today. 
green bushes feeds probably four or five chemical plants, combination of here in Australia, but equally in China. And I think similar logic can prevail through the North Americas with Patriot's Corvette project being, a, being an important part of that. Uh, a little bit about the project timeline. We've heard a, a fair bit of crap about what it might take to build a mine in Quebec. Um, it's not going to take 10 years to permit. And, and I think the, you know, that's been misrepresented. Um, uh, whilst it has taken some time for some projects to progress there, the truth is nobody was developing a project in lithium between you know, 2019 and 2021. Zero work was done, not a penny spent. So don't use that now as an excuse to say you've got a long approvals process. By our observation, nominally, two and a half years once you've presented your documents to government. We'll have already done two years of study work leading into that. So four years, four and a half years to develop a mine, absolutely spot on, and you're probably not going to do any differently here in WA. So I think Quebec is a fantastic jurisdiction. Solid mining enterprise, mining culture, and, and the governance framework to make it happen. If you're doing good quality work, you're going to get your mine approved. That would be our observation today. OK, a little bit about the lithium industry. I think you all know that, that China dominates the industry. So I won't go into that too much. They dominate in, in um, value-added chemicals. They're, they're dominating in, in cell-making capacity. But the problem for the West is now much, much bigger than just that. Because today, Chinese EVs are landing in Europe and North America en masse. So not only are you, uh, you know, a Ford, a GM, a Stellantis, uh, not only are you have to, having to rebuild your business around a future EV supply chain, you've already got the competition in your market today. And the reason I'm dwelling on that is to say, I, I think that things like the IRA are really just the beginning. There is going to have to be a lot more incentive and support in the North American and the European supply chain just so that the car makers survive. It's going to be ultra competitive with China landing a quality product at the right price in your market today. So on the right there, I've grabbed some data off UBS and it relates to, to um, car export data coming out of China in roughly the last couple of years. Total car exports are up about three times, but importantly, the EV subcomponent is up 10 times. So it's already happening. The competition is already in your market today. So the car makers have a huge amount of work to do to catch up. They're basically a decade behind, and it's going to hurt. So there's going to be a big, big change in, in the automotive industries over, in those markets over the next couple of years. Quick comment about price development. So in the lithium world, um, pricing's peaked and, and you know, in theory come off. Um, but here we are today with a relatively soft market in, in China. It is today. The, the combination of, of EV versus ICE discounting has been an issue. Um, a few too many batteries and as a result stocks being depleted. So that's led to some weakness. But the key, key to come out of that is the price hasn't fallen below $35,000 a tonne of chemicals. Compare that to historical norms, well, five to $15,000 a tonne. Ask yourself why. If the market is weak, why is it $35,000 a tonne? And I think the reason is because the right-hand side of the cost curve has already been built out. Lots and lots of high-cost projects have already come to market, and as a result, the paradigm is now changing about what it, what it means to have price support in the industry. So I think we can be pretty confident about having competitive projects like we have here in, in WA, um, but others around the world making healthy, healthy cash flow through the cycle. So we're working really hard on the development of the CV5 project, a CV5 project in the first instance, but a lot more exploration to come. And, and I'm confident it's going to come in spades. One last quick industry comment. Um, for those of you that remember Peter Cook, Cookie, he used to stand up here and he'd, he'd put photos of key mining people up and then have a bit of a doppelganger next, next door. And uh, I reckon I might have copped the Grim Reaper one year. And, and I, you know, on one of those down years, and I think to myself, okay, well, 
people thought the lithium industry was a bit of a flash in the pan. And now they, you know, they've gone through the stages of grieving and there was denial and, and then there was, uh, okay, a little bit of acceptance, but I reckon we've now moved on. And when I think about lithium and the critical mineral sphere, we're probably now into to the realms of we're optimistic. And so we should be. For the mining industry, it represents, I think, probably the biggest change you've seen in a century. We are now the solution to global decarbonisation as compared to historically being branded the problem. And it's a really powerful opportunity to completely change the game with respect to the talent that we attract to the industry, you know, the, the, um, the young professionals, the young trades being part of a really important part of global change, mining being the solution to the decarbonisation journey. And we should, we should absolutely capitalise on what that opportunity represents for, for the industry as a whole. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure to be with you. Any questions, Thank you, Ken. Great presentation.